Okay, we're good there. Now let's uh, move on to getting the cylinder, piston, head, and all that stuff on there. All right, so we got the upper end rod bearing in, and we're gonna go ahead and put the piston pin back into it. Now this already got the pin in this side because this top end came off of our bottom end here that we used for all the dyno work. We'll put this up here. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure on it and it'll eventually line up and go in. And one of the things about these, um, about the 310s that has always been an annoyance for me is how hard it is to get the pin in. But I had seen this uh, video here a while back from uh, this YouTuber, you guys might know him, Mike Sabo. Got a great channel, you wanna go on over there and subscribe. Put this in, leverage this down. Oops. He did it better than I do. But it works way better than what I used to do. Get the clip in underneath here and just roll it up into there and lock it in place. Now, there's the thing about the, the wrist pin in gap being side to side or up to down. Um, lower RPM motors like what we turn, I, I see these things clip out because you had asked me, do they pop out? And yeah, I've seen it happen, but normally it's been on like CR uh, 80s, 125s, not really too much on the 250Rs, but still at that, I'm gonna go ahead and move the gap here with this pick and I'm gonna move this gap down to where it's at the center, either going down or going up. And I'll just switch, I'll just push this around until I'm down more to where the center is. All right, so we got one of the base gaskets on there. We're getting ready to put yep. the cylinder on. Both of our dowels are in. Dowels are well. in, yep. There's two, one on each side. We're gonna go ahead and put on the spacer plate. And that's another one of those things you may or may not have a spacer plate depending right. on what depending kind of Depending on your stroke. Big stroker guys need them spacer plates. All right. Now I'm gonna take this and I am right-handed. So I work this direction. I've got the rings right over the piston pins and I'm gonna clamp down on it, placing this on the front, coming over the top of it and down. Now people are always like, oh, that was, you made it look too easy. But honestly, if you've done thousands of them, it, by this time it should be pretty easy for you to do. If you're still having problems after doing a thousand of them, you're probably doing it the wrong way. <laughs> wrong career. <laughs> yeah, you, you need, a, need to pick a different career. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is, I had all the clearances set up on this um, when it was on our test motor, but what I wanna do is bolt the cylinder down and then check, make sure that the clearance on this is the same as it was on the test bottom end. Now everything should be same, same, but this is one of those things where we're talking about a little bit of difference in the squished band width is gonna change our burn speed, our, our, our flame front speed, and so I wanna make sure that it's right. So we'll get this bolted down and then we'll go to there. You guys will notice too, I've, we removed the power valve. Well, Dave did. Yes. And uh, we blocked that off. Yes, and we will, I am going to, which I don't normally do this. Everybody that knows me knows that I'm, I don't do dyno numbers because I think dyno racing is ridiculous, but I will provide for Michael so he can put up on it the before and after dyno charts so that you can see with all the changes that we made, what we started out with and what we ended up with. And I'm gonna do that as exclusive content for Mike Sabo, the Saberator. Look at, I'm doing this and I'm not even looking, it's crazy. So I've got this wrench that's been ground down, okay, to be able to get in there. And of course, everybody's gonna be like, oh, well, do you torque them? Yeah, I do. You ready? Well, that's a nice set right there. Hand torque. Yeah, it's hand torque. I know, I know there's people pounding on the keyboard right now. Oh, that's the most ridiculous thing ever. All right, well, I built thousands of them and they all still work and they run really good and I don't have problems with them, so I guess I'm the most ridiculous thing ever. Thing is, is there's so many different cylinder types that you can't even get 
even like with the Motion Pro tool, getting them in to... The problem is, is the guys that design these stuff never really have to work on it, so they don't know what it is to get around the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've always said this, that somebody should spend 10 years as a field mechanic before they get to be an engineer, and then things would be designed a lot easier to work on. All right, so we got that right there. Um, I'm gonna get some clay. We're gonna clay up the head, and then we're gonna measure what our clearances are. All right, we're about to put the head on. All right, and we're, I've got the O-rings dielectric in because we're reusing the ones that were on the dyno. Sometimes the center one will try to poke out a little bit after you've used it. So put a little dielectric grease in it and just tuck it in all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this down on here. Now, Dave and I already checked the squish. So how did we check that, Dave? I used the clay method by putting a piece of modeling clay on both sides of the wrist pin. Um, I, I'm not opposed to using the solder method. It's just a lot of times solder will fall too far out of the range of where we need to compress. And so it's either hard to compress or you don't get a lot of compression out of it. So I use the clay method. We ended up with 65 thousandths clearance on this, which I know is enough so that we're not gonna get any interference between the head and the piston once we get to expansion and rod growth. Um, what the most important thing about this is going to be, though, is going to be the burn speed. And calculating how fast that the flame front propagates across the squish band, I think would be a good subject uh, for some night we get together and do a live feed or a pre-recorded thing with Bubba Ramsey, and we can all go through that. Now, you'll notice that there's something a little bit different here. I hate the crush washers underneath here because you get so many times when they leak. So on all of my heads, I will cut and install an O-ring that drops on here. And then I use these stainless steel nuts that you can get from uh, Bob Albright or David Noss. I love these things. This is what CP Industry uses on all their heads. I've been doing this for a long time and we just don't end up with, uh, with leaks on the head nuts so and the o-rings are reusable over and over there are 18. Dave when you torque those do you do uh stages? Yeah I do I walk it down a couple of pounds and then this is always you want to go cross of each other Right now, I'm just getting them all snugged up, so. Take it up to the last. And on this pipe, springs go on the stator side. I really like these um, O-ring billet exhaust flanges much better than the OEM steel one. Now, there's the great reed spacer debate. And I'm going to tell you how I answer the reed spacer question. I don't. I let the dyno answer the reed spacer question because not, oops, not all motors like them and not all motors hate them. And you have to understand the science behind the reed spacer and how it is affecting the motor to really understand what its true practical use is. And there's a lot of information on the internet about what reed spacers are used for and what they do and 90% of it's incorrect. 
You guys have probably noticed this is a totally different intake setup than we had yes, before. Yes, this is Sonny's intake that was designed to correct the problem with the angle difference from the ESR cylinders to OEM cylinders. And we've got V-Force 2 reeds, mm -hmm. thanks to Dave, and the reed spacer. Both of those things weren't there. We had the, uh, actually I got them right here. We were running ESR reeds before. No reed spacer and a UPP boot. And in the dynos, we found that this was its favorite combination by far. Now, Dave, do you ever use any kind of sealant on these? Not if all this stuff is aluminum and, you know, we took we took the plates and we ran it on the surfacing block to make sure that it was absolutely true. But if I've got an old reed cage that's um, like, an, like an OEM one that you can tell has been put under be an, a bunch of pressure, it would not be a bad idea to do that. But since I have the... Um, this one here and we need to pop this off to get this one in so uh, just the thing you have oh, to yeah. take this off and then we can get this one in and then once it's in it pretty much just stays in but um since i have a, a surfacing plate most of what i do i use the surfacing plate for to straighten it out if you didn't have that then yeah um some sealant would definitely not be a bad idea uh there's another thing though i'm going to bring up and i know this is going to cause controversy but all these people were like, oh man, I've got a little leak in my intake and I burned my motor up. Just understand that motor builders kind of laugh at stuff when people say it like that. It would take a pretty massive air leak to burn your motor up from the air leak. That's just one of those things and we have proved that just time and time again um, that it's not, it makes it where it's hard to jet at the bottom because we've got some unregulated airflow, but not impossible to jet at the bottom. So obviously you don't want a motor that's got a huge amount of leak in it, but you know, somebody tests it, you know, the, the old 10 pounds over 10 minutes and you don't want to lose more than a pound a minute or some people would do them overnight. And I used to do the same thing too, but you need a massive air leak to cause a burn down on a motor. And there'll be people that say, oh no, I just did it with a little one. Okay, well that's fine. <laughs> and you had better luck than I did. All right, so I'm gonna get a wrench and we'll take this off and then put that one in. You see guys at the dunes on a banshee and they'll have, uh, they'll fire the bike up and they'll be riding and the right pipe is smoking and the left pipe is not. Well, 99% of the time it's because that the crank has been twisted out of true and then it's traveling like this in the seal and they're burning transmission fluid and so there was a guy this last time up uh, Bubba and I was standing there and we're like well how long do you think it's going to be before that guy gets towed back in about 20 minutes later he gets towed back in you know comes walking over and asks uh, oh you know you know what happened here and it's like you know the one plug looks fine and the other plug is definitely burned up because Pumping all that transmission fluid through it wasn't all that grand for it. Yeah, I remember you telling me that story. Yeah, yeah. All right, get this back on here. And we are really close to having this thing ready to install and then go hit the dunes. Because like Captain Ron said, if anything's gonna happen, it's gonna happen out there, boss. All right, guys, well, we have the motor all wrapped up. Uh, I think we have just about all the bases covered. So we're gonna jump right into it and throw this in the frame. Uh, we'll fire this thing up and we'll take it to the dunes and rip it. Yeah, hopefully everybody enjoyed the video. Probably some of you thinking that's 30 minutes of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> and uh, I wanna nominate uh, Arlen Lehman for doing a video with Mike Sabo. I think he needs to keep going with this and, and just travel around and meet all the all the big builders. So if you agree, throw a like down in the comment section. Yeah, it would be neat to see uh, the differences between Dave and Arlen, like we were saying before. You know, there's not a right way or wrong way. Well, no. there are wrong ways, but... <laughs> yeah, there are some wrong ways. But it would be neat for people to see how the different builders who have been doing this for all these years do it and understand um, that there's... 
that we are builders, but we're still human too, and we have differences, but we we get along. We're friends. Right. So different ways, but with the same end result. Exactly. That's so. what counts. All right. Let's get this thing. All on. right. Let's do it. What the f is going on? All right. Oh, let's go again. <laughs> Classic. Well, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> Just got done bragging about you. That's why we're off camera. Oh, wait, no, we're on camera. Delete that shit. Delete that shit. Okay, not everything is 100%. We are.